Oh yeah, you can do the reading if you want to. So please help me to welcome up our speaker, Paula. Thank you very much, Heidi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, just wanted to check. Are we? Yeah. Cold morning, not for the Scandies, but for, <laughs> for us island people. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'll just get my readings up here. So the say shot there, it's okay before we start. Heavenly parents, thank you that we can come before you today on this uh, beautiful sunny but cold day and uh, ask you to help us to really receive your love and uh, guidance and that you can uh, inspire us as a community and thank you that we can be together in this beautiful uh, unity house peace embassy or chung chung and pray that you can guide us and uh, uh, share your heart with us today and throughout the week i pray and report this so my name colin of the Kamu Best family so uh, <clears throat> I, I just wanted to share a few slides and I didn't want to put them to the Zoom because some of them are not really, I won't be sharing them all. And uh, to be honest, my, my title is uh, Witnesses to the Second Coming, which we are. And uh, the reading is from 1996 translation of Divine Principle, the period of preparation for the second advent of the Messiah. It was the 400 year period from the Protestant Reformation in 1517 to the end of World War I in 1918. 2.1, the Cain type view of life, the pursuit of the external aspects of the original nature first aroused a movement to revive the ancient heritage of Hellenism and gave birth to the humanism of the Renaissance. Renaissance humanism opposed medieval culture by elevating the dignity of human beings and the value of the natural world over devotion to God and religious dedication. The able type view of life, some people regard the progress of history from the medieval to the modern world as a process which has alienated people from God and religion. This is because they view history according to the Cain type view of life. The original nature, however, not only pursues external values, it also seeks internal values. As medieval people were prompted by their original nature to pursue internal values, a movement arose to revive Hebraism, which bore fruit in the Protestant Reformation. The Reformation spawned philosophies and religious teachings, which developed a multidimensional view of life, seeking to realize the God-given original nature of human beings. We call this the able type view of life. Even as the Cain type view of life led away from God and faith, the able type view of life guided modern people to seek God in a deeper and more thoughtful way. So as I was preparing for today's service and trying to come up with some message or hope that God can inspire in me some message, I was reflecting very much on the work of, you know, as our true parents, our true mother, as she took over, I guess, the not the mission, but the, the main 
uh, they've always been co-founders, true parents of all our organizations, and they've been partners, and they've been our true parents are. <clears throat> it's not one; it's two people. But she's had to carry the much more of the <clears throat> the burden of the weight of the providence since true father passed eleven years ago. So, but she has all, all the providential uh, imperatives that he has, so everything. And, and not only that, but she has her own mission now as the only begotten daughter, which is a very new concept for Christianity. <clears throat> but she's always been a pioneer and she's always stood on the front line. Maybe in the past she was a step behind father, but today she's, she's there and father's in spirit world. So she's a step ahead in a sense. But ultimately, we don't know how long your mother will be around for, which is why we have such a, a great responsibility. But of course, it's not, it should, it is a burden for us, but it's not, it shouldn't be a burden in the sense that how lucky we are to be the witnesses of the second coming. When we look at the history as not just, when, you know, from when I was born and 50 years ago, or when you were born, you know, 20 years ago, or whatever, uh, history is, is, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years old. Providential history, the history before the second coming, or leading up to the second coming, we, we see is 400 to 400 years of preparation. So the events of the last couple of months, uh, you know, since October the 7th, the invasion of Hamas in, in Palestine and the Holy Land, I think have made us all sit up and reflect on on the work that true parents have been doing around the world and we see uh mepi for example which many uh, members in europe contributed so much to and got so much inspiration the middle east peace initiative when we went i went there twice in 2003 and 2004 to israel and i was very inspired and i could see the problems i could see the opportunities and the problems, you know, true, true father insisted that we crown Jesus as the king of Israel, which we did in the in the park in Jerusalem. And for me, this was like amazing to see. And I remember being with James and Alan and Albert and, you know, for such a incredible, we had Christians coming from all over uh the world, but particularly America, uh, black Christians, and we had Muslims from from you know the local uh, Palestinian communities, and of course the Israeli, the Jewish community were very supportive. So for a, that snapshot in time during those Mepi years, two thousand and three to two thousand and six. Maybe you could say 2008, but it was very intense from 2003 to 2008. We had a brief moment of unity uh, in, in a providential sense, I felt, and uh, on some level, an acceptance of true parents on, on, as peacemakers in the region. Now, what was the problem with Mepi? I was listening to some commentary about this in the last couple of weeks or since October the 7th. What was the problem with Mepi? It was only a problem. But Mepi is we didn't continue with Mepi, actually. It, it costs a lot of money, I'm sure, as all the initiatives that, that, that True Parents do uh, cost. So um, it's very hard to know how that could be revived. <clears throat> it would take something extraordinary, I think, uh, for, for us to be able to, as a movement, with our resources, particularly when you see what's happening in Japan and the persecution of our movement, so in many ways, we have made a lot of progress and True Mother's contribution since True Father's passing, you know, she was the one who basically established the, the Channel Gok. Uh, True Father wasn't alive to witness the, the first year of Channel Gok. Okay, what year is it of Channel Gok? Does anyone know at the moment? Huh? Is this the 10th year or the, where are we? On the calendar. Valeria must know, she's a good student, yeah? 
So the inauguration of, or the start of this new era, True Father wasn't able to, huh? 11, okay. So True Father was not able to see that and the entering of the palace. And we have this kind of, uh, uh, you know, legacy or achievement or, 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 or thing that True Mother, this, God's work continues just because the Lord of the Second Advent passes away. It doesn't mean the providence is finished, you know. Of course, he, he didn't get the acceptance that he should have, that we would have hoped in terms of the Christian community. He was rejected in 1952 after World War II. It was seven years where the world could have united. So this was, we tried to indemnify this again in 1992. God sent our true parents with the message of true parents in the complete Testament age. True mother spoke here in Ireland. It was the first time true parents came to Ireland was in 1993. It was the Women's Federation that were able to provide the vehicle for True Mother to come to the Westbury Hotel. I remember being there, and I remember, I mean, I was too young, only a year or a year or two in the church. So to be honest, I didn't really understand. I thought this is, this is, good. This is the sort of thing that happens all the time anyway. You know, you get to see True Parents, you get to see True Mother, you get to see... The Messiah, or the Messiah's wife, or whatever way you want to look at it. Back then, it, you know, it was it was uh, True Mother was declaring herself uh, as the liberator of women, and she was coming with the logic of love. It was called, yeah. So the the, the new understanding, the new truth that was coming, was was being spread by True Mother. True Father's reputation had been very, very badly ruined and tarnished by events in, 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 in over the previous, especially after Watergate in America. But he somehow managed to <clears throat> overcome that through, through Danbury and uh, through getting all the religious leaders to unite with him. Not all the religious leaders, but a certain foundation, particularly among the black Christians in America, were able to unite with True Father. And on that foundation, uh, a lot of good things came, but it was True Father's heart of suffering. He was willing to go this path once again, to go to prison. And um, he emerged victorious every time. This is the pattern you see for, for, for True Father, for True Parents. Every time they are attacked, every time they are um, humiliated by the satanic world, the courses that they endure as the able side, you know, this heart, the heart of Jacob to come back and to win even greater victories. Um, this foundation of suffering, I suppose, is, is following the tradition of Jesus Christ. And it, if you compare the, the life of true parents to the life of Jesus you know, people will say, oh, Christians will criticize us for that. But actually, true, true, you know, I, I, I think there's so many amazing things that true parents did that to, in following on in the mission of Jesus, as we prepare for Christmas, I think it's, it's worth remembering that we are the ones like that are alive at this time, alive to witness the second coming. Now, you might say, well, two parents, two fathers in spirit world. Of course. I mean, Jesus went to spirit world. What happened after Jesus went to spirit world? Well, did, did the people say, did God decide, okay, that's it, it's over. Like, he's dead now. People haven't accepted him. No. that's That was only the beginning of the work, actually, when Jesus went to spirit world. After his resurrection and end. He ascended to heaven. <clears throat> That's when the work began, the work of Christianity, which we've seen for the last 2,000 years. So, True Mother, what is, you know, our responsibility? What's my responsibility? Do, do you guys, you know, you have all talents. We all have our, we like to think that we're created as children of God and we all have talents. Well, you know, I was reflecting on that. What's my talent? You know, what's my, dare I say it, my... Uh, superpower. God, do I have any? You know, 
my useless basket, useless <laughs> to say down the country, you know. And sometimes I wonder about that, you know, maybe being an Aquarius or something like that. I don't have any specific one thing that I can point to that I'm good at, which is very disappointing. <laughs> but, um, you know, I could have been a, maybe a, have a superpower. I mean, make me a good chess player or make me, uh, you know, good at sales or, you know, business or football, anything, you know, <laughs> it's one thing, one thing that I could be good at, God, you know. So, um, anyway, that's, that's, uh, my little complaint. That's my, my course. I have to walk. Yeah. Being a useless, uh, not having any superpowers. <laughs> so I look at he likes of Elon Musk, you know, and you you think she's he's like Iron Man or whatever, and he's able to do so many things, and you know, almost feel sorry for as difficult as this might be, you'd almost feel sorry for the Irish government sometimes when when Elon Musk starts picking on the Leo Varadkar as we saw during the week, you know, please stop bullying me, you know. And, uh, you know, I like politics and history. And, and of course, we're, what, 10 days out from the the burning of O'Connell Street. And uh, it was very shocking, I, I think, for everybody. We've never seen anything like that. The closest we got to it was the Love Ulster uh, rally. I hesitate to call it a rally. It was in 2006 when <clears throat> the Ulster... Unionists decided to come down to Dublin and have a march just to see what the reaction would be. <laughs> well, they, they tore up the streets, uh, particularly down near um, College Green there. There was, uh, you know, there was actually masonry around the the area, blocks and stuff like that. They were doing some renovations. So the protesters, the, riot, the rioters, the rioters helped themselves to the blocks and uh, threw it at the at the um, assembled parade participants. So that was the nearest we got. But this, what we saw uh, on Black Thursday, it was supposed to be Black Friday the, the next day, you know? Isn't that what you call it? Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But it was Black Thursday and, and uh, it was quite a shock. Um, so even here in relatively peaceful and harmonious Ireland, we can see that uh, we have also some challenges and we have some, you know, decisions and choices to make in terms of how we want to proceed in terms of the politics and what philosophies we want to follow. I think there is a battle going on in the world uh, between in the able type view of life and the cane type view of life. And I'm sorry if this narrative doesn't suit everybody that there's black and white, good and evil. And I'm not saying that it's always like that. I'm saying there are, of course, many shades. But in general, I think this is what the principle teaches us. And we see forces that want us to be God denying, that want us to follow a particular path. We see other forces that are trying to pull us in a good direction, you know, some of you here, I think, went to Jordan Peterson uh, 18 months ago now or two years ago, whenever that was. Last September. Last September. And, uh, you know, people like that and uh, Dennis Prager, they are pulling us in a more righteous direction or trying to encourage us. But the way sometimes at the moment things are in, in this country is, you know, it's easy to get depressed, but it's not just here. Many, many countries particularly in Europe, even in America now, we see this trend. But it's temporary. In, in the long arc of history, I won't say it bends towards righteousness. I think Obama said that. But I think it, it bends towards accepting our heavenly parents. And in that context, you know, we've been in the last 30 years, as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of True Mother, True Parents, first visit to Ireland, which I was privileged enough to be to be at. I've, I've been privileged enough to be at the three visits of True Parents. The second one in 2005 was uh, on O'Connell Street, the very O'Connell Street I mentioned a minute ago, where it was on fire, it was being burnt. The scene of the 1916 Rising. So it's a very important place. 
O'Connell Street in that sense, scene of our the birth of our nation, a scene of the destruction of you know our nation in a way uh, ten days ago, and uh, the scene of the second coming um, in two thousand and five. I don't know how many of you were there or remember that, but um, it was very special. And I, I'm always when I think of that, I always think of Halvard actually, and Halvard is, is a, and Patricia as well. Reverend Iverson, as, as I will call him, Reverend Patricia Iverson and Reverend Halvard Iverson, you know, they, they for me epitomize this uh, witnessing the second coming. I was listening back to testimonies on um, Spotify of a, a series of it's a podcast from America, from our American movement. It's talking about, it's called Why I Joined. And uh, it's got, you know, the, the big shot kind of disciples of, of, of our true parents, like uh, Tom Ward, Professor uh, Dr. Ward. And it's also got some lesser known members, you know, more humble members, maybe like myself without superpowers, you know. And there are some of the more interesting stories. I was listening to one yesterday, how they survived, how they joined. There should be another series called How I Survived in the, in, the, in the Unification Movement. But anyway, to hear the testimonies of people. And I think it's something that's very important for all of us to do, particularly, you know, your parents, to put down on, on, on paper or to record or to make a video or to do have some chronicle of, of their uh the acts of the apostles if you like you know of, of true parents because we don't know how when our mission will be fulfilled on this earth when we will have completed our mission and when we will be asked to continue on in, in the next life but i remember in 2005 i said to Howard afterwards Howard, this this has to be your greatest achievement to be able to welcome the Messiah to, to Ireland. And of course, it doesn't happen. It wasn't just Howard, <clears throat> Patricia, it was many people helped with that, and we got help from other countries, you know. But still, to be able to assemble enough people to make True Father feel at home so that he could give a four and a half hour speech and speak again the next day, and it, 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 imagine the, the service that has done for the nation you know, in, in, in the historical context. That's why I mentioned it. A year later, 2006, Patricia, Reverend Patricia Iverson, as I will call her, because she's a national messiah, she, I felt, was really the force behind being able to bring so many people to the Alexander Hotel for True Mothers, third, True Parents' third visit to Ireland and, and last up to now. So <clears throat> I think I feel privileged that I could see True Father up close, particularly in 2005 and also in Brazil in 2000. And uh, we have a couple of years left of True Mother's life, hopefully many years, 20 years, 30 years, who knows. But realistically speaking, every time you see her, you have, we have to be conscious that it could be the last time. So we should really drink that in and enjoy that. Um, I have a lot of slides here and I don't want to show them all, but just over the last uh, uh, couple of months, been quite active on the UPF front and trying to get an office of European relations in, in Brussels. You see some pictures there of um, a trip that myself and Tinko made to Brussels, and we met with uh, some leaders over there. But I think it's important for us to see that we, we sometimes you might think we're an insignificant little nation here in Ireland. But uh, the reality is, any nation has a certain amount of power, a certain amount of, you know, influence. So how we use that influence is important. I mean, you have the Israeli prime minister complaining about the fact that Leo Varadkar didn't uh, 
was you know his language when when uh, that little girl this is hand the hand her name is hand and forget her first name uh, when she was found he said she was found and the Israeli prime minister said no she was kidnapped by by Hamas <laughs> we rescued her whereas you know so in the UN Ireland sits between well they used to sit between Israel and Iran because it's alphabetically organized so you know we're not as insignificant as 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 you might think but what is you know the purpose of our um when, when, when I when I joined, we had a when we were witness to. We had a little flyer and had ten questions on it, and it said, first one was, "What's the purpose of life? Does God exist? What's the origin of evil? Is there a spiritual world? Huh? How do we create a better world?" And all of these are <clears throat> kind of trigger questions you get you to think. So the only one that I quite happy enough I knew what the purpose of my life was it was you know to live a good life and try to be a good Christian and go to heaven yeah so what's the purpose some people don't even can't even answer that question today because they're they're not religious or maybe they don't feel there is a purpose in in their life yeah so but the question that got me was what is the origin of evil <clears throat> I couldn't answer that question because as a Catholic, you don't really teach you the origin of evil. When you become a unificationist and you learn divine principle, you learn that it is the fall is the origin of evil, the fall of man. And if you're not religious, the fall is a real problem because Adam and Eve, who are they? Like they don't, they're not real, are they? I mean, even if you are religious, okay, it's a story, yeah. Because the Bible is the Bible. Even you know, if you're a strong Christian, do you do you have a literal interpretation of the Bible? You probably don't. If you do, you're in a minority today. So, in terms of you know the origin of evil, over time, through praying and and understanding the principle as a religious person at the time, but somebody who had no power to change my life, I began to develop a relationship with God based on not, not so much the principle and the truth, but based on confirming throughout my life the truth of the principle through the actions, through the example of true father, the, the exemplar of true parents. I'm able to see this works or this doesn't work. So after a while, it comes to the point where even if I have doubts and I wanted to leave, I couldn't because I can't forget this truth. I can't erase this. This is too strong. So over time, like people say to me, you know, I'm looking for a job or doing an interview. Why don't you just, you know, why don't you just um, play the game? Why don't you just suck it up? You know, wear the rainbow badge or pretend that you're in favor of, you know, Woke diversity, inclusion, and uh, equity. Die. I don't call it die. I'm going to call it die. I think that's a great idea. Instead of DEI, call it die. DIE, diversity, inclusion, and equity. That sounds good. Everyone should be in favor of that. You know, why don't you just play the game? Yeah. And maybe I did play the game in the beginning, but the game has become uh, very different now. There's very high stakes in the game today. It's not, it's not like you can just pretend to play the game. You have to be all in today in most places. Maybe when you're young, it's okay. You get away with it for, yeah, I got away with it maybe for a while, but I don't think it was as bad as it is today. The culture war is what I'm talking about. The Cain type view of life versus the Abel type view of life. Standing up for your values and what you believe. I'm not. I'm not here to to judge people. You know. I'm just saying, if you have to play the game to survive, you have to think about that. Because maybe, maybe God wants you to feed your family. Maybe God wants you to have a place in society. If you can find a way. 
to keep your convictions and your faith and not be discriminated against, then do it. It's still possible, particularly when you're young. But I just, I just feel it's more difficult nowadays to do that, and I can't do it anymore. But at the same time, it's easy for me to say, yeah, I give up. I'm opting out. Like, I'm 50 years of age, nearly 51. I can survive. But for, for my kids, for your, your generation, you're just starting out. So you have to be careful. You have to think about this. You have to pay, play the strategy, you know. And don't. there's no point in alienating people if it's going to lose you your chance to, to survive and to, you know, to influence them down the line. Because things are getting more intense. And they will reach a point where everything's going to flip. I mean, already we see in the world, we see America is no longer the, the hegemon it used to be. It's being challenged now by China, possibly down the road, India. Let's see. We see uh, a crisis on, on, on many fronts. So this era of peace and harmony and tranquility, I hope it's not finished because, you know, I want my kids, this generation that, that I'm looking at here, you guys, I want you all you know, to, to have a wonderful and happy life and to pass on these values and not to look at this as a burden that, that's going to destroy your life, knowing this truth and knowing true parents. But I'm wondering if we have the capacity in our movement to actually go to the next level. Do we have the capacity in the Family Federation and UPF to reach out to people, to give them our message? Do we have anything to offer them, really? You know, we're so small and so insignificant. Of course, your parents are glorious and they have done so much and they're building the kingdom of heaven and all that. But what what, what do we have here in Ireland or even ourselves in our own homes and our own communities and our own tribes? Do we have anything to offer, really? Are we inspired enough to bring people here for Sunday service or for, for events? Yeah? Are we just going to continue witnessing to ourselves? I mean, it's good to do that. It's good to have a community. It's good to support each other. And I think when when you're young and you have a young family, that's all you can do is you have to, you, all you can do is, is pay the bills and you, you just have to survive. But if you, if you as you get older, before you get married and after you, after you kids are, get, are older, you, you find yourself with more time and more energy. I think there's possibilities there to do stuff when you've done the hard work of raising your family. There's possibilities there. You have more time before you start family life. You've heard this millions of times probably before, and if you haven't, maybe you should. When you are young and you're full of energy and you feel in, invincible, indestructible, I hope you do, you should do, because you are. You really are. <laughs> It's after when you get older and you have your family, and that's great. That's a wonderful time. But I don't think it's possible to do that and 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 witness, if you like, if that to use that word, whether it's family federation and and witnessing, or whether it's or other providential organizations like UPF and trying to build a network of peace ambassadors or trying to organize events for people who are not going to join our church. We don't even want them to join the family federation. We want them to stay where they are and to witness within their own organizations to true parents and the work that true parents are doing, such as the Peace Road, such as the Peace Park in, in, in Korea, trying to unify Korea, such as the 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 Peace Road, the bridge and tunnel, uniting Japan and Korea in an undersea tunnel, the Bering Strait. I mean, who thinks like this, you know? True parents, the, the breadth of true parents' vision, but they can't do it without us. And I say us, I mean humanity. But we are the lucky ones at the vanguard. We are the disciples and apostles of true parents. And we are the witnesses. In, in hundreds of years' time, 
we're going to be able to say, wow, <clears throat> we were here. And we did what we could. We carried the torch. And we'll be able to look back at our own <clears throat> children, descendants, who are alive, who will be alive. Hopefully the world will be in good shape. As science and technology and the external providence continues, as well as the <clears throat> restoration of the heavenly kingdom, the establishment of the Chano Gok. A couple of years ago, we had this magazine in Europe, and this was our contribution. I, know, was it in, I think it was in Europe, 2014, the anniversary, I think, of the uh, European movement, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. But we had some contribution from Ireland. So between that and the and the boxes that are upstairs and the and the history that all that stuff constitutes and trying to rescue stuff from being thrown out and trying to throw out stuff we don't need, I, I took on the task of bringing home a few boxes because I was afraid they'd get thrown out. And I still haven't managed to delve into them, unfortunately. But I will. I will. I hope I, I better because otherwise they'll be sitting in my garage and I don't want that. I want to bring them back when the place is nicely renovated. Hopefully we'll find a spot for the stuff that is relevant, that is precious, that is, you know, historically um, a treasure for, for, for the nation here. But this publication, it shows pictures there from True Mother from 30 years ago. And... I'm just, I mentioned that because it was 30 years last last month when True Mother spoke, first visit of True Parents to Ireland. So I, I, I kind of, what, what, it, what it's, it spoke to me about was, as I said, it was only maybe two years, 1991 I joined. So by 93, when True Parents came, when True Mother came, um, I thought this was kind of normal. This is regular. Like this is very intense when you first join because you think it's always going to be like that. And then after a while, you you end up on the street and you're fundraising. You're thinking, oh my God, this is miserable, you know. So so there's there's the times of very intense tours and <clears throat> mobilizations, and then there's the other times when you're lost and alone, struggling to find your faith with a pain in your hand or one world in your hand <laughs> wondering what what am I doing here yeah but looking back on it is is very inspiring because you realize it time flies it goes so quickly like 30 years goes in an instant and some of the people there the the MC Sean Byrne Father Sean Byrne who joined up in still Oregon he was a Catholic priest he's no longer with us I remember staying with his wife in Maureen Walsh's house. I think it was Waterloo Road. She's no longer with us either. And um, I'm reading her her a copy of, of her book, uh, The God's Will in the World, with her her name was on it, which I rescued from <laughs> from the office. I'll give it back. But the point is, this book of speeches, you know the the. I don't know if you know it. It's maroon. God's will in the world. Yeah, it's incredible. Like before we had Honda K, we used to read, I used to read this. Many members used to read this. Honda K came in in 1997, according to God. Well, I thought it was 96, but 97. So we've had this tradition of reading True Parents' words every day since then. And some days it's, it's really inspiring. And other days it's like, oh my God, it's just dates and, and commemorations and all that. And it's very uninspiring, particularly for, for my son. <laughs> he used to force feed him that on the way to school during lockdown. <laughs> it's only 10 minutes, I said to him. Come on, can you, not, can you not just do 10 minutes? But 10 minutes is a long time when you're 17, 18. <laughs> It's an eternity. So I don't think uh don't think he was very grateful for that. But anyway. <laughs> whatever else, whatever else I was taking him away from from at that hour of the morning, I don't know. But anyway, but the point for me was not the actual words at that time, it was the tradition 
the tradition of doing it every day, having that habit. Like if you can't take 10 minutes out of your day to study the word of God, and not only do you not have to read it, it's going to be played for you uh, on an audio file, you know, in your car stereo or on your earbuds or whatever. If you can't get into that habit, Jesus, that's, if, if, you know, of course, some people don't like that because they think, oh, everything has to be like, speak to me and has to be the truth and all that. And in this age when social media and everything is tailored to your preferences, I understand that. I get that. I totally get that. But for me, the only reason I emphasize it is because it kept me alive, particularly that book, God's Will in the World. And when I look back at it today, there are things which are challenging. Like, did you get three spiritual children as a foundation for a family? This sort of stuff. Can't honestly say I did that. Then you can make excuses. Well, that's my tribe and I've done this and that. And, you know, great, great. But what, what the essential takeaway for me is that if I'm alive, if I'm lucky enough to be alive at the time, which I am of the Messiah, what are my acts? Am I an apostle? Like, where do I fit in here? Have I done anything? Am I just a useless basket or what am I? So uh, maybe this message goes over your heads because you're second generation or third generation. But I think <laughs> it's good for you to know. <laughs> Definitely gone over. I've gone over her head. But uh, it's good for you to know where we're coming from sometimes. Because I think if, if you, like I, I, at the moment I'm studying in, in, in Hyojong Institute. So um. And to hear the, the the content from Dr. Ward, particularly Dr. Perrottet as well, it's amazing, you know. And and Mick, Mickler, Dr. Mickler is another one. He's he's got the history of the the church down. He's like our official historian. But um, I think the the second when I when I go to a lecture or I participate in a discussion and I have to write papers, then I get I get to hear the views of most of the people. And of course, now are second gen actually. And I, I start to think, wow, actually, we're in very good hands because these guys really know their stuff. They've inherited so much from, from their parents, from true parents, from our movement. And that's very inspiring for me to see that. And I feel more like I can, you know, relax in a sense that the future is in good hands because if if I'm, you know, running out of inspiration because life of faith is a challenge whether or not you know you're a christian or a unificationist you have challenges all the time like you have doubts of course you have and i think it's good for us maybe to understand as first gen sometimes what the second gen are experiencing or what you are struggling with or <clears throat> how we can help each other because we we need you guys for inspiration i do anyway and um, maybe sometimes you need us, you know. I don't know. I'm sure you do. As as your parents, you need your parents. You need your family. Of course you do. And um, there's there's something in each of us that is divine. I, I, I don't. I, I'm I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. But what's happening in Japan? That's why I've got this this slide up here. Is 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 of course incredibly depressing because we've been. I feel, for me personally, I feel like we got too big for our boots. Your mother got too big for her boots and they wanted to take her down a peg. She had Donald Trump on the, the rallies of hope and people like that. Who who the, the, the Cain side hate with a passion, you know? What do they call it? Trump derangement syndrome that people get. This, this I mean, I've... I, I'm not bothered by him personally. I, I think he's, if you have to choose a side that he's on, he's on the able side, that's for sure. But as a person, you know, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw, throw him. And he's got many um, terrible qualities, as we know. But hey, if he's willing to stand up for true parents, for true mother, okay, you can say, well, did, did he not get paid a lot of money to do that? Yeah, they get paid a lot of money to do that no matter what side they're on. That's what they do politicians and, and public speakers. But the point is, you know, we got, I feel, we got too big for our boots. Your mother got too big for her boots, proclaiming all these things. And it annoyed, it annoyed 
the 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 cane type side, which coming from the communists, the CCP of China, <clears throat> who are determined that Japan will also come under their sphere of influence. This is why we see, I believe, what we see in Japan, the Eve nation, that God is relying on, the most important in, in many ways externally country in our unification movement in terms of resources, in terms of membership. So if you destroy with the plot, kill the former prime minister using a disgruntled uh, <clears throat> son of a, of a unification church member, blame it on the unification church or the family federation, and hey, there you go. you got a perfect little crisis going on. Now, I'm not saying that these guys are sitting down every day in, in China trying to figure out how to destroy the family federation. <clears throat> this is the work of Satan. This is the work of the devil. And, I mean, it's up to us to really see what can we do here. I, I, I was all for, like, going down to the Japanese embassy and uh, protesting, you know, and I'm still wondering why we're not doing that in, so, in some ways. But I guess protest is always the the easy option in a way. It's easy to destroy something, as we saw uh, Thursday, on Black Thursday. Very easy, you know, light a bin and run over to a guard a car, your big man with the big mob around you and throw, throw it into the back of the car and you're a big boy, you're a big hero, yeah? It's very easy to destroy stuff. But how, how difficult is it to create something or to go out on the street and witness like Patricia and Howard and Eli did to their credit? It's very difficult to do, to create something, to create a movement, to create a church, to create a, a, a you know, a network of people that, that over time can trust you enough to support you and your ideals and to want to know what's behind that. So that's the challenge. It was the challenge 30 years ago when True Mother came. It was the challenge in 2005 and 2006 when True Father and True Parent and True Mother came. It's the challenge today. You know, but the biggest challenge is getting off, for me, getting off my ass and getting down there and having the inspiration to want to stand there in the cold or go online and witness to my friends step by step. You know, not everybody's interested. So after a while, you realize, well, my family's not interested and my friends aren't interested. So you know what? I'm just going to have to make new friends. I won't say new family because you can't really do that. Uh, or, you know, network in different circles. <laughs> <laughs> network in different circles but the goal is the same I'm alive at this time I don't know how long I'm here for by God I need to make sure that I've made an effort I've done I've pulled out all the stops to do this so having that relationship with God having that faith that can you know drive one drive me to get out there to care enough about people it's very hard sometimes. I've gone past the point where I care about being rejected. I don't really care about that anymore because you know what? I don't have any redeeming talents or qualities that I can see in myself. But that's not enough if I, when I meet my maker to say, that, well, why didn't you do anything in your life, Colin? Why didn't you actually succeed to, you know, what, what did you, what's, what is your life? What was your life about? What was the point of your life, actually? Yeah? What was the point of your life? I want to be able to say, that I did my best to witness the second coming. He doesn't care, like God's not gonna care if I was good at football or, you know, a good writer or an academic or whatever. He's not gonna care, like, so what? Like, I've got loads of these, I've got loads of these here, or there, you know. What did you do? You were alive at the time of the second coming, yeah? We're building the foundation now. Christ has, you know, come. And he, is he amongst us? Is he with us? Are they with us? The true parents with us all the time? Can we have to? I always felt that before true father died. Will I be able to feel like he's here? Because I didn't see him every day. I saw him a couple of times in my life. I wasn't working with him every day, like if, if you were in America or Korea with true, true father. So for me, it was going to be the same. Most of my life was going to be the relationship of trying to, to have that relationship with true parents from a distance, 
a spiritual relationship where I don't see them every day. And it's the same with True Mother. <clears throat> and even when True Mother gets older and older and older, even as father got older, he, you could see he was getting, I won't say, when you get older, you know, you start to lose your faculties. It's a physical thing. Your mind is not going to be as sharp. How could it be? It's rare. It happens sometimes. So you have to remember, like, the person. I, I have to tell myself, this was God's representative on earth. True parents were God's representative. No, you can pick holes in the mission. You can pick holes in things that happened based on, on various failures. But the reality is, what did I do to testify to that? Was I able to become like that in any way, in any meaningful way? I've just a few slides up here just to, to conclude, but uh, Dr. Ward in, in the Hyojung International Institute of Peace and Leadership, um, Public Leadership, formerly UTS, for me, it's been the most inspiring thing about HJI. And his, his um, lectures, like, it's just incredible. Every, every lecture is almost incredible. And I hope he doesn't find out that I've copied his <laughs> slides. But that's why I didn't want them on the video. But basically... He's able to, he, he, see, he sees it as our mission to get across to the world. Like the world has missed a trick here. The world has missed an opportunity so far. A couple of people have caught it. You're the result here. We're the result in this room. Our parents, or in your case, your parents or myself, we have caught it. We were lucky enough to catch it. But think of how much of the world hasn't caught this message and they're alive at this time and they're still making the same mistakes. Yeah, wars and uh, destruction and all sorts of bad things happening. Like, I'm sorry to be such a doom monger. Like, I know there's great things happening and most of the world has been pulled out of poverty and, you know, more and more people are, are better off than ever they were before in history. I, 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 I get that, believe me. But the reality is we're so small still, but we, we have something to work with here. We have put in place the foundation stones. We, I'm saying true parents, as, as children of true parents, we have something in place. And I think, I think looking at what your mother has done with the Hyojung Institute, turning UTS from a, a little theological school into something that will educate our whole movement in different areas, not just theology. I think it was a masterstroke. And I can see the hand of God in that. I was very skeptical in the beginning, like I usually am. As you get older, unfortunately, you just get skeptical about many things. I was skeptical that, you know, they were throwing out the reputation and tradition of UTS and turning it into this Korean thing. Yeah, with Korean name. <laughs> Yo Jung. But now I see actually, yeah, she's trying to broaden, broaden it out to encapsulate the mission of the unification movement, which isn't just a religious uh, uh, mission at all. And it, it, peace, what is peace studies? Like peace studies sounds very airy fairy, very sort of, yeah, right, you know, peace, like. But it actually brings in politics and diplomacy. It brings in economics. It brings in conflict resolution. We see the wars that are happening today. And actually, the answers potentially are in true parents' thought, but not true parents' thought uh, only. That's not the most important thing. It's true parents' heart. You know, it's nice to have a philosophy. It's even better to have action. But it's it, what, what your parents want, I think, and they've shown it in their lives, is heart. They want us, they, it's not that we, we, they want us to believe in God. And this is the point that Dr. Ward makes in these slides. But he wants, true parents want, and God wants to believe in us. Yeah? God hasn't had people in history that he could believe in. 
that he, heavenly parent, he, she could believe in. He hasn't had those people. So I think we can be those people. I think we don't need to have superpowers. We don't need to feel bad. I think if we have the heart that God can be proud of us and that we're doing our best, because there are challenges out there. Like I said, like if you're working in an environment where nobody seems to care about values and you feel threatened, sometimes you have to just suck it up. Maybe it's better. You know, what did your father say when he was in, in, in prison? And uh, in Korea, there was, there was a story where somebody, um, he, he, was, he, was, he told him to deny he told the other prisoner to deny that he knew true father so that he could get out or something. It was, it was a Jesus. There was some story about that where it, where it was more important to preserve the life rather than to stand up for, for the Messiah at the time. I can't, it's not going to me. I'm not saying all the time. I'm saying it's easy for the likes of me to say, yeah, I'm going to stand up for true parents. I'm going to be proud of true parents because I got nothing to lose. I don't have anything. Just the same when I joined. I had nothing. I had a failed leaving cert. Problem with alcohol. Drugs. So I had nothing. So it's easy for somebody with nothing to give up everything because they don't have anything. But how, it's, it's, it, it, that, it's not, not going to work for everybody. You have to be clever. You have to ask God. That's the relationship with God. Through that, God will tell you what to do, whether you need to bite your tongue or whether you need to speak out. Just because, you know, somebody's telling you that this is the right thing to do, it's the right for him or her, it might be right for you. It doesn't mean you love God and true parents any less. So I'll just finish there and... Uh, You join me in the prayer. Honorable Mother, do you have any parents? We thank you for your love and for sending us our true parents. We pray for Japan as the Eve nation and for our Japanese brothers and sisters who are facing incredible difficulties at this time. We thank you for our Japanese brothers and sisters here in Ireland from um, Kimiko and uh, Noriko and Spirit World, and we pray for um, Sumie and Kazuko and um, Masami and for all the Japanese here in Ireland and those of, of uh, Japanese ancestry and second gen as well. Um, Jula, we pray for, sorry for the left, anybody out have any parent, but we pray that we can help as a Ireland, a small nation, is really uh, struggling sometimes to find our way in the future where we haven't really managed to understand what true parents have done, even though they have been here three times, Heavenly Parents. Still, we are struggling to, as a community, to outreach to the society here. We ask that we can find a way to show um, Hyo Jung and filial piety to you, heart to you and to our true parents by doing our best, Heavenly Parents, to establish in our own lives uh, good lives of faith and in our families to build blessed families that you can be proud of, to overcome the difficulties that come and not to be uh, judgmental towards each other other or towards ourselves even to to feel that you are with us and you're guiding us and you're very inspired by us and you are um really relying on us heavenly parent but also that you trust us heavenly parent and that um we're so happy that you can you have chosen um us or our parents to follow the second coming to be witnesses to the second coming in this time of history which will be so short, such a short time. And uh, we want to use every second and every minute in a useful way and not to fall into despair and not to lose faith. And please forgive us, Heavenly Parents, 
much, for it is a sin to be in despair, Heavenly Parent, from Catholic Christian point of view. But Heavenly Parent, we sometimes are weak, Heavenly Parent. So we ask you to guide us and to share the love, your love through our true parents, to help us to understand how we can attend our true parents and how we can attend our true mother, particularly in this time, and how we can support each other and if we hurt each other that we can apologize and that we can say sorry and that we can try better because heavenly parent we just want to be experts at knowing your heart and knowing how to comfort your heart help us heavenly parent to do this and to bring unity and peace and love to the nation heavenly parent that people can wake up that it won't take horrendous events for people to or to be able to uh, reach us but father we have to reach them we have to reach out to them they cannot be expected to come unless we use all the resources that we have in this beautiful building but also in our day-to-day -day life through our communication networks online and offline help us to to find a way to teach your precious truth but the most important thing heavenly parent that we'd be willing to love people heavenly parent because you will not be You'll be disappointed, Heavenly Parent, if we don't bring more and more people out of the difficult hell situation, the hellscape that we live in today, Heavenly Parent. Help us to bring everybody to the channel Gok and especially ourselves to renew ourselves every day, Heavenly Parent, through our, uh, our prayers and um, uh, res resonation prayers and uh, ancestor liberation and blessing. Help us to really believe that you are working, Heavenly Parent, and please forgive us sometimes if we don't uh, have that heart or have that um, understanding or if we doubt you and doubt ourselves as a result, Heavenly Parents. So I want to ask you to be with us this week and accept our offering today of our Sunday service. And uh, thank you so much for your love and your heart, Heavenly Parent. I pray and report this in my name, Colin of the County Bless family. Amen.